In the second half of 2024, India's Federal Ministry of Mines made a headline-grabbing announcement. They had discovered massive lithium reserves across several regions of the country. The largest deposits were found in Jammu and Kashmir, along with significant reserves in Karnataka in the southwest and multiple sites in eastern India. According to estimates, the lithium reserves in Jammu and Kashmir alone could reach 5.9 million tons. On top of that, more than 10 other important minerals were reportedly discovered in various mining zones. But what caught everyone's attention wasn't just the size of these discoveries. It was how the Indian media framed the story. Reporters emphasized that, if these minerals could be successfully mined and refined, India would finally have a chance to free itself from dependence on Chinese minerals. Sounds like a dream scenario, right? But before the excitement could spread too far, local mining engineers quickly poured cold water on it. They pointed out one hard truth. India currently lacks the capability to mine and process these minerals on its own. Even if foreign partners helped with extraction, India's domestic ore processing capacity remains very limited. What's more, among the newly discovered minerals, the processing technology for six of the key types is still exclusively mastered by China. This raises a serious question. Why is India so desperate to break away from Chinese mineral dependence? And more importantly, why can't India or other countries easily replace China's role in this sector? If you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our latest uploads. Now, let's dive into today's topic. Chips, semiconductors, electric vehicles, and clean energy. All these high-tech sectors share one thing in common. They rely heavily on critical minerals. In today's global landscape, many countries are racing to secure their supply chains for these strategic resources. For example, the United States, the European Union, Japan and Australia have each introduced strong policy measures to tighten their control over mineral supply chains. India, too, is not standing still. It has actively joined hands with the US, Japan, Australia, and others, in an effort to reduce China's dominance and push for a so-called de-Chinaization of the international mineral network. However, data from 2023 paints a different picture. India's total imports of 10 key minerals, including cobalt, nickel, lithium, and copper ore, reached a record 11 billion US dollars. Among these, the country's dependence on imports of cobalt, lithium, and nickel is a full 100%, while copper ore import reliance is an astonishing 93%. What's even more striking is that a majority of these minerals still come directly from China. Take bismuth, for example. Between 2019 and 2024, 85.6% of India's total imports of bismuth amounting to around 35,000 tons, came from China. Lithium tells a similar story. In 2023 alone, India imported $25.53 million worth of lithium ore from China, accounting for 61.8% of its total imports. For silicon ore, India brought in 886,800 tons from China, again, a huge share. The same applies to natural and flake graphite. Out of the 221,900 tons of natural graphite China exported globally in 2023, India bought 22,500 tons, representing about 10.1%. For flake graphite, India also ranks among China's key buyers. From these numbers, one thing is clear. India is one of China's largest customers in the global critical minerals trade. In recent years, India has tried to tackle this dependence by forming a mineral supply alliance with other nations. Unfortunately, progress has been slow, and the results have been far from ideal. With the alliance failing to deliver as expected, India has been forced to look for alternative strategies, hoping to discover new domestic resources and achieve a breakthrough from within. To support this goal, the Indian government has relaxed multiple mining restrictions and even approved new exploration policies that allow companies to search for mineral resources without a formal mining license. 
these exploration companies have indeed become quite active. And recently, Indian media reported major discoveries of lithium and other key minerals across five regions in the country. At first, this seemed like fantastic news, but soon after, the excitement turned to embarrassment when experts pointed out that India currently has no capacity to extract or process these minerals effectively. So, what's really behind this dilemma? At the end of 2024, India's Federal Ministry of Mines once again delivered thrilling news that swept through the country. A vast number of key mineral reserves had been discovered across Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka in the southwest, Rajasthan in the west, and Jharkhand in the east. Among all these discoveries, the lithium reserves in Jammu and Kashmir stood out the most, estimated at a staggering 5.9 million tons. Even more impressive, those regions also hold over a dozen other critical minerals essential for industrial development. As soon as the announcement was made, excitement spread nationwide. The Indian media went into overdrive with headlines like, The mines are found! India will no longer depend on China for imports. The tone of these reports carried a strong sense of optimism as if India's path toward resource independence and economic revival was already secured. But this euphoria didn't last long. Reality soon hit, and the dream of sudden wealth began to fade. Not long after the media hype, one of India's top mining engineers stepped forward and raised two critical concerns. First, while the mines have been found, the country's mining capacity simply cannot keep up. Many of these key minerals are buried deep underground, requiring advanced exploration methods and high-precision extraction technology, equipment and expertise that India currently does not possess. On top of that, mining such minerals demands massive, high-risk investment. Yet India still lacks strong policy incentives to attract private capital. Because of this, many local enterprises are reluctant to participate drastically reducing the economic potential of these new discoveries. Second, even if India manages to extract these minerals, processing remains a major bottleneck. Take the 5.9 million tons of lithium in Jammu and Kashmir as an example. Although the reserve looks promising, India lacks both the technical know-how and industrial capacity to refine lithium from this specific geological composition. One of the engineers bluntly remarked that even if India successfully mines these ores, it still cannot do without China's advanced technology and refining capabilities. So, this leads to the big question. Why exactly can't India do without China? In the end, the core reason why India can't do without China lies in China's absolute dominance in the global mineral industry. As the world's largest mining power, China's reach extends across every layer of the supply chain, from exploration and extraction to processing and refining. Each link is deeply tied to China's advanced technology, huge investments, and years of experience. According to survey data, China has identified 173 types of mineral resources, including 13 energy minerals, 59 metal minerals, and 95 non-metallic minerals. Just looking at this classification alone is already astonishing. But what's even more remarkable is the amount of money China invests into this field. The country has poured roughly 19.4 billion US dollars into mining technology development. Funds that have not only improved mining efficiency, but also boosted exports of China's key minerals such as copper, lithium, gallium, germanium and graphite all considered strategic hard currencies in the modern economy. Still, China's true strength doesn't just lie in raw exports. It's in its processing and refining superiority, which no other nation has matched. Let's look at the data. China currently controls 87% of global rare earth processing, 58% of lithium refining capacity, and 68% of silicon processing. In other words, the global supply chain for these critical resources can hardly function without China's involvement. Take bismuth, for example, a metal essential in pharmaceuticals and chemical manufacturing. Its smelting process is extremely complex, 
and China controls around 80% of the world's total smelting output, effectively locking out other competitors. For India, bypassing China in bismuth, refining is simply unrealistic. Now look at lithium. Although other countries have lithium resources, China still handles 58% of global refining capacity. That means nearly every country that mines lithium must rely on China's technology and equipment to turn raw ore into usable lithium compounds. And India is no exception. Silicon provides another clear example. This element is the backbone of semiconductors and solar panels, but its refining process is incredibly intricate. Most nations avoid it altogether due to its complexity and cost. Yet, China's annual industrial silicon production and capacity account for a staggering 80.2% of the global total, completely dwarfing its competitors. Then there's tellurium, a key material for solar and thermoelectric devices. China produces 60% of the world's supply, leaving virtually no challengers. Finally, graphite, the lifeblood of electric vehicle batteries and steel production. Here too, China dominates with 67.2% of global output, effectively controlling the entire market. According to the Indian Ministry of Mines, the country has so far identified 30 key minerals vital to its national economy and overall security. However, among these 30, at least 10 minerals are almost entirely dependent on imports, with the majority coming directly from China. From 2019 to 2024, India's import data shows an alarming pattern of dependency on six specific minerals. Bismuth, 85.6% imported from China, lithium, 82%, silicon, 76%, titanium, 50.6%, tellurium, 48.8%, and graphite, 42.4%. This clearly indicates that India's dependence on Chinese imports in the field of key minerals is not a recent development. It's a long-standing structural issue, and the reasons behind this situation are easy to trace. For decades, India has relied heavily on imports to meet domestic needs, while investing very little in exploration, processing, and extraction technologies for its own mineral resources. This imbalance has made it almost impossible for the country to compete globally in critical mineral industries. That's why many experts believe that India's ambition to develop and utilize these strategic minerals is, at least in the short term, inseparable from China's help. After all, China holds an overwhelming advantage, not only in mining, but also in refining and technological expertise. However, there's an interesting twist to this story. Despite India's frequent tough stance toward China, it's extremely hesitant to seek direct cooperation in this sector. Instead, New Delhi has opted for what it calls a multi-pronged strategy, hoping to find alternative paths to independence. The first step was to study China's development model in the mineral field learning from its experience and trying to replicate its success. Everyone knows that lithium is a key component of electric vehicle batteries and energy storage systems. To reduce its dependence on imported batteries and foster a domestic battery industry, the Indian government rolled out a production-linked incentive program worth 180 billion rupees. The plan aims to build an advanced chemical battery manufacturing capacity of 50 gigawatts within five years. But India may have underestimated the complexity of mineral extraction and processing. When compared to leading nations, including the United States, India still lags significantly behind in both technology and infrastructure. Catching up to China, therefore, seems almost impossible in the near future. It's worth noting that this isn't the first time another country has tried to overtake China in mineral processing technology. As early as 20 years ago, Western countries began strategic efforts to reduce their dependence on Chinese minerals. Yet, after two decades of attempts, this goal remains out of reach. So while India's ambitions are big and its plans sound promising, from a practical standpoint, it remains incredibly difficult for India to truly escape its reliance on China. So, the big question remains, can India really pull it off?
Can the country break free from its long-standing dependence on Chinese technology and resources to build a self-sufficient mineral industry? Or will it continue to walk the same path, relying on China's advanced systems for years to come? From today's perspective, the answer seems clear. Although India's ambitions are strong and its policies bold, the technological and industrial gap between the two nations is still enormous. Without China's support in refining, processing, and advanced mining, India's so-called mineral independence may remain just a dream for the foreseeable future. But the future is never set in stone. If India can learn from China's model, invest heavily in research and technology, and attract global partners with real industrial experience, it might slowly build a more self-reliant foundation. Until then, however. Its efforts to decouple from China in the critical mineral supply chain will likely face many challenges and setbacks. So, what do you think? Can India really make it happen, or is this just another ambitious plan destined to circle back to China's doorstep? To stay updated with our future videos and exclusive insights, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We'll continue to bring you more deep. Engaging stories from across Asia and the world.